Hi class, it's Ng here with a short video to walk you through how to manage your Friction Lab data in Google Sheets. Uh, as you can see, I have a post-it here with all of my lab data. Um, one of the students was kind enough to share his data. So here, the first thing that you got to go to is you got to go to Drive, make a new Google Sheet. And then let's just do some basic setup stuff. If you know how to do this, by all means, skip ahead to the other parts of the video uh, that I put timestamps on in the description. So here, first things first, uh, let's title this Friction Data. And then I need to set up this table in here. So it looks like I got to do cardboard length. I know how to spell. Uh, let me make this bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, and then um, a, a lot of the stuff that happens in sheets, um, like sometimes you guys will try to move things around and it, do, it doesn't work. Um, notice what happens with my arrows. So here, if I'm going to try to move this across, I'm going to wait for the arrow to be these two arrows back and forth. Not the finger and not the regular arrow. The finger pulls down a drop down. You don't need that. And then this lets it slide it across. So there, cardboard length. And then um, I need the actual cardboard length, which is 29 centimeters. Notice I don't write in centimeters. That's huge. Don't put in units. You should know that by now. And then here down here, I'm going to do my material. I'm going to do a trial one, trial two, trial two, and then trial three. Fine. And then I'll need an average. AVG is average. I want to find my angle. And if I'm an overachiever, I'm going to find that friction coefficient. Fine. Okay. And then here, uh, I just need to put in my numbers and my material. So this material for this student was tape, metal, and cardboard. For you guys, you should use uh, whatever material that you guys actually used. And then let's put in the actual numbers, 15.4, 23, 1.8, and then 14.4, 24.9, and then 47 or 4.7. And then finally, 15.2, 18.7 and then 3.7. Great. Okay, so here, um, the first thing that I would do is I, I, I like making my table look a little bit neater just in case I want to copy and paste it. So here I'm going to uh, give them all borders. Hooray. And then I like filling this in with some pretty colors, right? Okay, let's give these all bordered. And then let's give you guys some color. Let's keep you guys at light blue. Great. Okay, so everything in light blue, notice we have numbers for it. Great. All right, that's how you set up your table. Now that we have our table set up, the next thing we got to do is we got to find the averages and the angles. Let's start with the averages. This is a pretty simple function here. I'm just going to uh, fill this in with a color so it looks nice. Okay, um, this, this is super easy. You push equal to A, V, E, R, A, G, E. Look, and Google is smart enough to already show you a suggested data, and it is right. It wants the average for that. But supposing um, you want to do it like on your own, you type in the word average, open parentheses, meaning shift nine, and then highlight the stuff that you want to average, one, two, three, great close parentheses, and then you press enter. The two most critical steps in that is punching in that equal sign. Again, in this cell, I'm going to punch in equal sign. Once you put in equal sign, um, Google is very smart and knows that you're going to put in a function. It suggested a function that's fine. Uh, I don't trust the suggested function each and every time. I just know that it was the right one this time. Instead, you do equal sign, A-V-E-R-A-G-E -E for average, open parentheses. Highlight the numbers you want to average and then close. Great. Here's the best part. You, like I, I did that in like seconds. You don't need to do this over and over again. Look at my arrow. You don't want the arrow. You don't want this hand. 
you want this little cross right here. See how my, my cursor turned into a little cross? Grab that, drag down, and now I have all the averages. Imagine you have a lot of data. This is going to save you a ton of time. And look, I did all three averages in mere seconds. Now that we found our averages, the next thing we got to do is we got to find the angles and the friction coefficients. Here's what you're going to do. It's very similar to what we did with the averages where we did an equal sign and we put in an equation and we get to drag down and do that equation all over again. So I'm going to tell you a function. It's not going to make a lot of sense to you right now, but um, there will be a supplemental video to kind of explain what this function means. But here's the function. You go to angle, click enter, press equal sign, and then you're going to type in degrees, dr, uh, d e g r e e s degrees, open parentheses, a sign, anti sign. A sign refers to the inverse sign, the anti sign of your average height for one of your trials, in this case for tape. So that's 15. I'm going to just click on that cell F4 because I want that to change. It's going to be a variable for us. Divided by, and then I'm going to choose 29 because that is this student's cardboard length. For many of you, you're not going to put in 29. You're going to put in whatever your cardboard length is. It could be 23, it could be 31, whatever your cardboard length is. For this student, it was 29, so I'm going to type in 29. Close parentheses, close parentheses, press enter. There you go. His angle was around 31 degrees. Okay, so here, um, this is ugly. This is way too many numbers. So I like going here to formatting. And then I like to format the number as an actual number. And look, it, it puts it down to just a few sig figs. And look, it looks neater. And then here, same thing. You don't want the arrow. You don't want the hand. You want this little cross. Hold down, drag down. Those are all of our angles. And here, this angle is perplexing. Um, chances are none of you have an angle above 45 degrees. So this is probably a number that you guys should reinvestigate. Um, the physics there says that if you're only working off friction, it shouldn't be over 45 degrees. I, I, I will show you. The last thing that you got to do is then the friction coefficient. To find the friction coefficient, again, just putting in another formula. This time, this formula looks like this. Equal to tangent of radians. Right? It's, for some reason, the Google Sheets can only work in radians. It's, it's weird. And then we want the angle, this angle, close parentheses, close parentheses. Right? So here, that's your formula. Press Enter. So here, a friction coefficient of 60 sounds pretty correct. I'm going to drag this down and then again, sort this as a number. Or, I mean, format it as a number. The only thing that's kind of glaring is I have one friction coefficient that's above 1 which is very, very rare. This is for things that are really, really sticky. So here, um, when you do your discussion, you're going to have to talk about like what happened here with this metal. Maybe there were tiny little hooks on it so that it could really hold on to it. Or maybe you lifted the board too high. But if I see a friction coefficient above 1, then I know that um, it, was, it was more tacky than it should have been. Maybe like the surface of it was a little bit stickier, but it's doing more um, than what typical uh, things with friction would do. Okay, that it shouldn't be above one unless it's like tape or glue or something. So there you go, guys. Um, that's how you guys uh, fill out your data table. The last thing that you got to do is then you got to make a um, a table. Now that you have the whole table complete, now you can make a pretty good um, chart to do some, you know, just some uh, an easy way to represent the data. So here. The, the magic button here is control. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to highlight this column. I'm going to hold down control and highlight this column. Oh, I got a little go cell. I do that all the time. That sucks. So I just got to press enter and get rid of it all. all right? I click somewhere and get rid of it all. Let's try that again. I'm going to hold down right here. Right? Hold control. Highlight you guys. And I'm going to highlight my friction coefficients. That's better. And I'm going to insert a graph. So in the past, um, we almost always use scatter plots. But here, this type of data is um, discrete data. Like, it's not an if-then relationship that's continuous into a scatter plot. 
So the best thing to do is to do bar graphs. So here, let's choose some bar graphs. Here you go. All right, and then we're done. These are the friction coefficients per material. Uh, let's change the title a little bit. Edit chart, customize, title, right? Friction coefficients of uh, tape, metal, and cardboard. Done, All right? A good looking chart of Ardboard. Yeah, you, you know how to fix that. And now this chart, if you go up here, you can copy this and you can put this chart into your lab write-up. Uh, I also want to see this table in your lab write-up in your data table. Thank you very much for watching.